Welcome back to the comic book ASM artist. Today we're doing another comic book haul. And this one is huge. I've got a ton of books, a lot of collectibles, and uh, some things I was mailed that I want to promote here on the channel first. So uh, I have read this all the way through. I finished it actually um, last week. And this is Becoming Hero by Jen Finelli. And uh, she runs a YouTube channel, Actual Doctor ASMR. Go subscribe to that. I'll have a link for that below, as well as for this book. And uh, it's got um, her Gumroad account, I believe. And you can buy a bunch of things digitally on there. So there's two versions of this book. There's this one that has uh, no comic excerpts in it. And then there's the one you can get digitally. And uh, it's got little comic excerpts in it. The physical copies uh, a lot harder to come by. Uh, but the digital one you can get, I think this is around 10 total. But uh, yeah, and see it's just kind of inserted into the book here. And this character here is like the main uh, hero they focus on through this series. Or rather the book. And... Uh, yeah, it's really well done. Jen has um, a good sensibility for writing in a way that people actually speak. Um, there's a lot of humor in there. There's a lot of intrigue and action and everything. Uh, my favorite scene in the book is um, there's a scene with an Italian restaurant. So once you get to that area in the book, um, think of me. Because, uh, yeah, that's my favorite part. I th just thought it was um, so well done and humorous in that bit. So... And there's some serious stuff in that too, but I just thought it was really well balanced. So, and me and Jen will be having a collaboration coming out in the future. So, and Jen was also nice enough. The links below are affiliate links. So when you buy uh, any version of this book with those links um, through the Gumroad links, um, I actually get 50% uh, of that sale. So she's just splitting it right down the middle, which is really nice of her. So thank you, Jen, for that. And uh, I can't wait for us to do our collaboration here. It's going to be a comic store role play video. And uh, next I have a great item here. Uh, this was given to me by a old college friend. Uh, he wasn't my roommate, but he certainly hung out in our room a whole lot. Uh, usually reading a lot of my older books and stuff. So, yeah, Bob is really into, like, role-playing games and, you know, all that type of cool stuff. So he bought a lot of miniatures, and he found this beautiful Captain America for me. And he hand-painted this himself. So you could see a lot of the fine details here. I was so impressed. You know, this thing, I think, was just a, probably like a dull matted gray when he all started. So he did, like, a... a black and white ink wash on this first and then uh, he went over it again with some other paints here so this is just really fantastic look at the effects on the shield there he really nailed uh, painting this thing accurately with the lighting and everything so I'll have a link to his Instagram where you can contact him for custom work uh, as well as his um, eBay store where you can get stuff he's already made, obviously. Uh, let me double check the name of it real quick. Uh, his Instagram is Bob Craft Hobbies, and uh, I think his eBay store is by the same name, but I will leave links below to that as well. So, just really cool. Uh, thank you so much, Bob, for this. I just can't get over how cool this is, and just uh, thanks for thinking of me, you know because he didn't, he didn't have to do this. This was just something he did for fun. And then I said, hey, I'll promote it as kind of a thank you, and hopefully you'll get some more business. So please go his way if you've got some customs and stuff you want to get done. All right, so let me get these out of the way here. Some of you may have already seen the little brief short that I posted earlier this week. I think as of this video, I'm going to pull it because the uh, picture quality wasn't too great on it. 
but I was able to camp out and get ENIAC number one by Bad Idea. This is the first printing. Uh, and since I camped out and was the first person to buy, there was only 150 of these available, one at each shop that exclusively sold uh, Bad Idea comics and the ENIAC number one here. So I waited two hours outside my shop. And this is the not first printing. So there, this is the trade dress for any printing that's not the first one. So it's just the black logo. Uh, I think the next one comes out, well, the next number one issue comes out in April. I'll leave a link below to uh, where you can find Bad Idea Comics too. They're exclusive to just random shops that went through a rigorous process. But uh, I'm going to show you a little bit of the inside of the book here since uh, that video didn't really show off the art too well. But I did already read this. It's really well done. It covered um, something in actual history that I didn't know about. Um, so I was kind of intrigued by that. I'm just kind of interested to see uh, what's going to happen with the book here. A lot of uh, spy elements. There's military elements and stuff. Um, it's just really well done. The art is great. Story is great. And then there's a backup in here too. Hero Trade, a brief case. So Hero Trade was a book uh, that I heard came out earlier, I think last year. I think about mid, six months ago last year maybe. And so now that is uh, going for a pretty penny now. Um, so yeah, this is, I don't think this is the whole story. I think this might tie in with ENIAC maybe. I'm not sure, but um, it was interesting as well. But um, yeah, I certainly want to, oh yeah, and the pin too gets you access to something when conventions come. So it's an exclusive ticket or something to do something extra cool. So I know some people are selling theirs on eBay and things. But, yeah, I am going to do a giveaway with this. Um, I want to say when we hit 2,000. So, please, guys, if we hit 2,000, I will give away ENIAC number one first printing. This is going for about $150 right now on eBay. So, I just want to let you guys know I appreciate you. This is a hard-to-come-by book. Um, it's a modern one. It was attainable for me, but for a lot of people, it's not. So, just kind of want to give back to you guys there and, you know, do what I can. Next, we have Berserker, number one. This is the big book that um, did really well on uh, Kickstarter. I think it raised about $2 million, and it's uh, co-written by Keanu Reeves. And it's starring him as the main character here. Uh, I haven't looked through this a lot yet, but it certainly looks compelling. Uh, the art is by Ron Garney, who I have adored from whenever he worked on Captain America back in the day. Uh, that was when I first started officially collecting Cap Monthly. So I love his style. It has certainly um, changed a little bit. I think he's got more polished certainly since time has gone on but uh yeah i look forward to reading this too and so yeah i got this is the normal cover by Raphael grandpa and then i got the mark brooks cover which is just glorious as well i love uh mark brooks's work so much Next, we got Demon Days, uh, number one. And then once again, got the Mark Brooks cover. And then I do have another uh, variant cover coming. It was a store exclusive, so I'll be showing that off uh, in a few days. And this was a fun book, too. This is Peach Momoko's uh, first interiors in a book. So kind of a big big. <laughs> Uh, deal. She's been doing a lot of covers, a lot. I've been surprised with how much work she's been turning out. So this is um, Full Interiors by her. I did read this book already. I just couldn't wait to, and I loved it. It was a really fast-paced, interesting concept here. Um, a lot of surprising elements to it, too. So 
when you read it, I'm sure you'll be surprised by them as well. But uh, I definitely recommend this as well. And then there is, um, I guess they're going to do this as kind of one shots. They were going to have like this as a mini series, but the next one's going to be like Demon Days and then uh, one of the other characters' names. And it's not going to come out, I think, until, I don't know. It's going to be a while, though, at the back of the book. Uh, says when, but I don't want to spoil it. Then we have Noctera. This is the Jock variant cover. And uh, this was another uh, kind of big one here that did pretty well on Kickstarter. Yeah, it didn't put up numbers like a Berserker did, but uh, still some great talent here. Scott Snyder. Um, and now I'm blanking on the other guy, Tony S. Daniel, whose stuff I love. I just forgot his name there for a minute. So yeah, Tony as Daniel, which I'm trying to remember if they've actually worked together on Batman before. I don't think they did, but of course I was reading Tony's stuff he was doing with Tom King and even prior with the Ra's al Ghul resurrection and all that. But this looks great. I love the art, and I can't wait to see what this is all about. Uh, this all really excites me because I got a lot of um, new number one series to start checking out here. So, and a lot of ones that have been generating buzz for a while. Uh, I got the Captain America King in Black uh, one shot. I think it's just a one shot special here. Which um, I haven't checked this out yet. I just know that uh, it's a cap special, so naturally I wanted to pick it up. And I, uh, I haven't read all of it yet, but it certainly seems like a pretty cool concept. So, nice little fun double page splash there with the buildings with Cap. So, yeah, that looks like a lot of fun. And then I saw this variant cover, and I just had to get it. This is like a Transformer robot looking Cap. This is for the Mech Strike miniseries that's coming out. I'm not going to pick that up, but I just thought this cover was cool in the very least, so I picked this up just because of that. Next we have Spider-Man number 59, which I think this is straight up the return of Mr. Negative. They've been kind of stringing us along for the past few issues here. And, uh, yeah, I think that now he's in the full swing in this one. And I'm actually behind on all my other reading, all my... i still got books from the past almost a month now I haven't read. So, I know the Spider-Man ones are ones that, um, I haven't been caught up on yet. A lot of them, I know, like, the future states are in a big old read pile and stuff. So I want to. I've just been busy. I haven't had the time. After I filmed that uh, Akira video uh, last Saturday, I wanted to check out the manga immediately. And I binge read the entire thing in the weekend. So that took priority just because I was so curious about the alternative take of the story. Next we have Spider-Man number 60. Kind of a Valentine's Day theme on this one with the heart. And yeah, Kindred is still kind of a problem for Spidey here. He has been in captivity, in prison, whatever you want to call it. And uh, I'm not sure if he's just living in Spidey's head rent-free right now, or exactly what's going on, but I know they keep um, kind of showing Peter going back and thinking about the encounter, because he did some super messed up things. He kept 
killing Spider-Man and bringing him back to life over and over and over again. He put him through the ringer, so he is pretty well haunted by this villain, even though he is someone that he uh, has interacted with quite a bit in his life. So... Next we have the Captain America alien variant here. And this was the main reason why I picked this one up. I'll still show some of the interiors. But this was the main reason was this cover here. Which, um, the cap book's been okay. It hasn't been anything really amazing though, so. I got spoiled whenever, um, they had old Ed Brubaker and Steve Epting on it. I don't, I don't think I've read a better cap run than that since. Speaking of which, we see Sin is in here again, which looks like she's been restored to. I know there was a period that she was more or less like a female version of the Red Skull. And there is the Red Skull himself. So it might get amped up if um, the Red Skull's actually in this. Cap's kind of a difficult um, hero to write for. Um, you know, he's certainly got that Boy Scout side to him. He's um, gotten a little bit rougher as he's experienced, you know, our modern age. Um, but still, like, there's really only a handful of villains that can show up and really whip up the readers and get them excited. And, of course, uh, the Red Skull is his age-old enemy. It's the equivalent of Joker showing up in a Batman book. So, uh, Next we got X-Men number 18 here. And uh, this looks interesting. We have a defunct Sentinel there. That might even be Master Mold, truthfully. Not sure. But, uh, yeah, it looks like they're focusing on a different part of the X-Men team here. I know that they are voting on uh, new members as well, so these could be their new members here or a different branch. I'm not sure there's so many mutant groups and stuff. It's hard to tell. But, yeah, this is certainly not the group we normally see. Next we have the X-Men number one. Uh, this is, I'm trying to remember the name of this. I think it's X-Men Legacy number one. This is the 90s revival series. And this is the action figure variant here. I showed uh, the other one off in the previous video. Um, let me see. Yes, it's uh, X-Men Legends, so... Yeah, I love this cover. I saw a pre-order for, I think it was issue 3, as another action figure cover, so I had to track down this one. And of course I had to get it because it's Cyclops, so all the original members like that are kind of must-have covers. And then we have this beautiful Batman 106 penciled variant here. I am blanking on the artist of this one. And uh, I pre-ordered it, and I wasn't aware that it was going to be a more pricey one here. But uh, I'm still glad I did. This is just a unique cover. And I've got a few more like this coming as well. Let me see if in the regular um, book if it shows the variant cover. So yeah, this was uh, 1 in 25. This is the Ricardo Federici Ricci variant right there so yeah this is the normal cover for Batman 106 and this is kicking things back into gear uh, after future state and we see Scarecrow is gonna be the big bad here so that'll be cool he hasn't had a main arc in a while so I look forward to seeing what happens with this and you know the dynamic of everything has certainly changed since the Joker war the status quo of Batman himself is not even the same 
you know, he doesn't have as much funds and things as he used to have. Um, so, yeah, there's certainly some interesting elements there. And some new characters and stuff are going to be popping in. And then I got the wraparound variant cover as well. I don't want to damage it too much, but there it is. Showing pretty much everyone who is involved in Batman currently. The glare on it certainly doesn't help, but it's a cool cover. Alright, I'm going to show off some of my collectibles I got here real quick. First off, I got the McFarlane Damian Wayne figure. I already took all the plastic and stuff out. I've still got to put some floral foam in the bottom. Um, but I love this. They really nailed, nailed the grumpy look on his face. It's got the John Boy Myers art card. And then, uh, as promised, I'm completing the rest of the Batman movie wave here. So here's the Riddler from Batman Forever. Here is Two-Face from Batman Forever. And there's the Mr. Freeze. I still have to find the Poison Ivy. She's a specialty shop exclusive, but my comic shop never got any of these pops. And actually, these are all from the HQ. And they never got the Poison Ivy one in, so I actually have to find that one somewhere. And then I'm working on... Uh, well, I got all the Fantastic Four ones I wanted here. So this is the Doctor Doom one. The Silver Surfer. The Super Scroll. Human Torch. Invisible Woman. I'm not sure why it says Invisible Girl. Mr. Fantastic. Which should say Reed Richards, maybe, if they're doing the other one. I don't know. They always say Mr. and Mrs. Fantastic, so... got these because um, soon they're putting out a giant Galactus pop and when that comes I think a lot of people will go back and try to find all these other ones to just kind of have the whole wave there's still the Mole Man and Herbie and the little Galactus in the slime but I don't really care for those ones so got all the ones that I wanted In conclusion, I spent too much on uh, Pops this weekend. So let's continue on with our stuff here. We have um, Future State Superman House of L, number one. And this is just pertaining to the entire Superman family, I believe. And I think this is just a one shot. Because Future State is pretty well done at this point. And it looks like it's the same artist all throughout. I just wasn't sure I wanted to check real quick. Then we have uh, Superman vs. Imperious Lex number two. This is a really nice variant cover on there. And yeah, I haven't read the previous ones for these yet, so I don't really know 
the premise. All I know is with the uh, other Superman one, focusing on his son, he put Metropolis in a bottle city, like, you know, the previous Superman did, but with not Metropolis, so... I'm going to say Candor. I'm sure. I think that's right, but <laughs> I can't remember at this second. That thing. And then we have Dark Detective number four. Let me do some of that before you. Yeah. All these cardstock covers here, so this is the finale here. So, yeah, I have been enjoying the ones that I have read here. Um, I think the main thing, Bruce is just continuing to stay off the grid as best as he can. Um, all the while, still trying to do what he does. He's in his safe house here. I think it's completely free of any real tech, although I just saw my computer, it looked like. Yeah, so the person he rents from doesn't want him having anything like that in the house. Here's a secondor secondary story here. Uh, Deathstroke's daughter in Red Hood. And we have crossover number four. So the big development here is we have Madman in the uh, story now so that's pretty cool i've seen a lot of madman books in my time uh i've never really formally read his entire story i've just seen bits and pieces of him but he's certainly a iconic independent character that um i definitely intend to remedy and read his full story i think more than anything seeing a lot of these independent books just kind of encourages me to want to create more, you know, especially in these times it seems like there's so many developments going on with DC and Marvel and bigger companies and stuff that it's just kind of strange, you know, so it's like why not just make your own stuff and be in control and be gain higher financial success than, you know, being paid a page rate, being promoted for a page rate, and then suddenly you're too expensive, so you can't find any more work for them, which is a lot of what happens. So this is Swamp Thing number one. I think this takes place after the Future State stuff. I'm not really sure, but, uh, I've always been kind of curious with Swamp Thing. I know I don't know a ton about him. I have a friend who really enjoys Swamp Thing, so um, I think he's been reading like Justice League Dark and stuff. Next, I got Spawn 315, and uh, Todd recently announced he's going to be doing a line of Spawn multiverse books, so that's kind of a big deal he's got coming. I think it's going to be in a few months. I can't remember exactly. And uh, yes, I did get the Spawn Kickstarter figure. I'll be doing a separate video on that uh, and post that later this week. So, or, you know, technically next week, whatever, after <laughs> Saturday, you know. Probably Monday I'll get that up, maybe. We'll see. But I'm going to do a comparison with my old figure as well as the actual pack and 
uh, comic that came with it. And then this is the Capullo cover. And we have Harley Quinn, book five, from the Murphy verse here. This continues to be an artistically superb book. That, uh, yeah, if you like all the previous White Knight stuff, you'll like this just as much. And we have Generations Forged, number one, which I'm not really sure what this is, other than just kind of like a collection of stuff. I think it's coming out of the other DC Generations book, obviously the miniseries there. So this includes a bunch of different art styles and stories. Uh, I think probably just condensing stuff that was possibly going to be released as, you know, smaller trades. So I'm excited to see Steel here. He's a character that I enjoy. Um, just trying to get you some of the different styles here. We see... Kamandi here interacting with Omac and the Team Titans. See the original Batman there. Like some Brian Hitch art. Let me show you a synopsis of all the artists there. So you know what to look for if you're into any of these guys. So there's that. I think that book actually comes before or after this one, Infinite Frontier. I think this either sets up or the other way around. This is either a follow-up or a setup to the other one. So yeah, this is another one. We have a ton of talent here, a ton of different stories. Focusing on everyone. This is a cool Batman piece there. Superman there. Some more Batman in the back. And this is another wraparound cover as well. Very cool. Okay. And we have um, Future State Batman Superman number two. Just uh, looks like they're de dealing with some uh, splicing incidents here. So something that has certainly been dabbled with quite a bit in the past. Even uh, with my character, the bull, that's certainly an aspect that will come out as well. It's been around for a while. I think as early as maybe Island of Dr. Moreau, if not earlier. But, you know, popularized by stuff like the Ninja Turtles and different Saturday morning cartoons and stuff. Showcasing, like, you know, animal people. And we have Man Bat number two. And uh, not sure what to make of this one either. I think I didn't read the other one yet. So this is him taking on the Suicide Squad in this one, so... I said the main reason I got the other one was for that cool cover it had on it, so... And 
And then finally I got the book that unfortunately the main plot point was spoiled for me online through people's video titles and article titles, but my shop didn't get this in time uh, because of the snowstorm we had. So everyone was just freewheeling about um, all the plot points and I hadn't read it, so kind of annoying. Um, but we already knew from the previous issue who the surviving turtle was, but this issue here focuses on certain demises of other characters, which I don't know if you've come across those other articles, so I'm not going to go into the plot points there. But yeah, this is the last Ronin number two, in case I didn't say it already. But uh, yeah, this story is a story that Eastman and Laird uh, wanted to do at the very beginning. It was something they thought about as just kind of like the final turtle st story, maybe. Very grim, just one turtle surviving in what happens to everything else because of it and why it happened and all that sort of stuff, so... Really cool premise if you like Ninja Turtles. Obviously, pick this up if you're not already. So, I had so much stuff. I think I'm all done with it now, though. So, yeah, let me know down below what you enjoyed. Uh, stuff that you might be getting you didn't see here. Um, any other thoughts or comments you might have, let me know. Uh, share this thing out. Subscribe. Uh, don't forget to like the video. Uh, and as always, you all have a super slumber. Thanks. Bye.